Hello to all and welcome back to my channel. Sneha Sopi welcomes you with yet another topic, a basic topic for grade 9th onwards. Many of the students, even they reach up to grade 11th and 12th, they do not know the simple topic, how to form a chemical formula of ionic compound. They're always in a confusion, in a dilemma, how to frame a chemical formula of ionic compound. So we shall start today, how to form a chemical formula of an ionic compound. Before we move on, if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe it and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of the latest updated video. Now the question comes up, what is a chemical formula and what is the definition of a chemical formula? If I say what is a chemical formula, a chemical formula tells the number of atoms of each element present in a compound. Although this I have already explained in my earlier videos how to find the number of atoms present in a compound, I do it here as well. If I say sodium sulfate, this is the chemical formula of an ionic compound, sodium sulfate, where sodium has two atoms, sulfur has one atom and oxygen has four atoms. So chemical formula tells us the number of atoms of each element present in a compound. Now, before we move on how to form a chemical formula, we have to first remember the valencies of the positive and the negative ions. Suppose, this you can find out in any of your books which is present. If I say sodium ion, so sodium ion is Na plus 1. Or you can even write it out as sodium plus. If I say calcium ion, calcium ion is Ca plus 2 or you can even write it down as Ca plus plus. These are called the positive ions and whenever a ionic compound is formed, the positive ion is written first and the negative ion is written later on. Like if I say chloride ion, that's Cl minus 1 or you can write down as Cl negative. So now we start up how to frame a chemical formula of an ionic compound. We start up with our very first, we take up the simple ones first and then we move up to the complex ones. If I say sodium oxide, what is the chemical formula of this ionic compound? I always tell you the positive ion is written first and the negative ion is written later on. Sodium is Na plus and oxide is O minus 2. Now, this is a crisscross method. What is this crisscross method? In our Indian mythology, we always touch our feet of our elderly members. So, just remember you have to touch each other's feet. How to touch each other's feet? This sodium has 1, so it needs to touch the feet of O. And O has 2, it needs to touch the feet of sodium. The charges, the plus and minus need not to be written. If 2 touches the feet of sodium, it is written like this. And if 1 touches the feet of oxygen, it is written like this. So it can be written as Na2O and this method is called the crisscross method. I give you another example. Just remember you have to touch the feet of each other. Now if I say potassium carbonate. Now potassium has a valency of 1 and since it's a metal it is positive 1 and carbonate is a polyatomic ion. It's CO3 minus 2. Same, we need to touch each other's feet. Only the numbers which are written on the top, they need to touch each other's feet. So this 2 will come and if 1 goes with a carbonate radical, it can be written as 1. Since we do not write 1, 
it can be written as K2CO3. Just remember to touch each other's feet, that's all. Now, if I take up more examples, like any other metal like uh, sodium, and we take up the polyatomic ion as nitride. Sodium nitride. So, its formula we need to see. Sodium is written as Na plus 1 and nitride is written as N minus 3. Just do a crisscross and touch each other's feet. This 3 will go down and it becomes Na3N. 1 comes up, so I'm not writing down here. 1. I hope this is clear. We shall do more examples to make you understand. Now, slowly and gradually, we move to little difficult ones. If I say aluminium phosphate, these are very important and basics for chemistry. Aluminium is symbol is Al and we write as plus 3 and phosphate is PO4 minus 3. Now check, this is plus 3 and minus 3. If these valencies can be cancelled, we cancel them. We know 3 ones are 3 and 3 ones are 3, so it's cancelled. So, what, what is left? 1, 1. So, we simple write down as ALPO4. I take up another example of aluminium only. If I write, what is the formula of aluminium carbonate? This will be a good one for you to understand. Now, aluminium has Al plus 3 and carbonate is a radical, it is CO3 minus 2. They cannot be cancelled because this is 3 and this is 2. So, we will use a crisscross method and need to touch each other's feet. Now, 2 is at the top, so it goes on the feet of aluminium and 3 is on the top of aluminium, it goes on the feet of carbonate. Since carbonate is a radical, we put them in the bracket and write down 3. Many of the students, they do like this Al2CO3 and when they are supposed to write down this 3 here, they write down 3 as this. This becomes wrong and this is correct. I hope this is clear to you. Now, one thing very interesting. I have told you in this crisscross method, always the positive portion is written first and then the negative one. But remember for a radical called acetate, if I say calcium acetate, acetate has come from acetic acid. This acetate radical is written first while forming the chemical formula of a compound. Acetate is CH3COO minus 1. So when we do a crisscross method, we always have we always write the metal positive part first and then the non-metal. But this acetate ones remember as a as a exception in which how do we write CH3COO first? Now who has to touch the feet of acetate? Calcium valency. So, it is whole twice Ca. We take up another example of this radical. If I say aluminium acetate. So, we have right now done aluminium has plus 3 charge and acetate has CH3COO minus 1 charge. So, if we do a crisscross, it, since it's acetate, you please remember that the acetate radical has to be written first, CH3COO. Now, what is on the head of aluminium 3? It is supposed to touch the feet of acetate and Al. One, you write or you don't write, it's really okay. Now, very, very, very important topic. There are many metals which have more than one valency, like copper, like mercury, like gold, like lead, tin and much more. Just remember, whenever it is says 
that frame the formula of copper oxide. Remember that copper has two valencies, copper 1 and copper 2. Now, since it's not mentioned which valency we have to take. Similarly, mercury has two valencies, Hg1 and Hg2. So, always in the case of copper and mercury, use a higher valency if it is not mentioned. Else, you use the, for the other elements, you use the lower valency. If I say copper oxide, copper has two valencies, one and two, but we will be using the higher one, Cu plus two. And O minus 2, 2 and 2 gets cancelled. So, if we do a crisscross, the formula will be copper oxide. Same, gold has also two valencies, Au1 and Au3. But if it is says that frame the formula of gold um, carbonate. So, gold you have, it's not mentioned whether you have to use the one valency or the three valency so you will be taking the lower valency and then frame a compound use a crisscross method and the formula comes out to be au2co3 i again repeat always remember for these two elements metals copper and mercury if it is not mentioned that uh, lower valency is to be used or higher valency is to be used Always use the higher valency. Rest for other elements, use the lower valency. So, this table I have formed and I have given you so that you can remember. And basically, they contain the negative ions more. Here, I correct the spelling. In some books, it is written as F, but we should remember as P-H-I-T-E, sulfide. And here... Sulfate, similarly, thiosulfate. So, children, you can take up any positive radical, positively charged ion, and any negative and frame the formulas. I hope this is clear to all of you how to frame a formula by this crisscross method of an ionic compound. Thank you, students. For uh, watching this video, if you have any problem, please jot it down in the comment box so that I can get back to you. Thank you once again.